Hi everyone, my name is uh, Fabien. I'm with uh, INSERM, National Institute of Health and Medical Research. I work for the regional office in the uh, Auvergne-Rhône-Alpes region. I'm in charge of uh, Europe and international partnerships. And uh, today I'm uh, with uh, Niels Colling and uh, Mans uh, Brogarden. Um, they were born, raised and educated outside of France. They both joined INSERM as uh, permanent researchers uh, recently, meaning in, in the last two years and uh, they are both laureates of uh, European funding's uh, ERC uh, starting grants. So uh, Niels and Mans, you obviously choose uh, France, and I was wondering why, and this is indeed my first question, why did you choose France and uh, INSERM, and I would like you to focus on uh, professional aspects. Right. Okay, so for me there were principally uh, three reasons. Uh, the first one is the ability to do collaborative sciences, and uh, the, the way INSERM encourages you to work in larger teams as a PI and work with other people on your level and do science together and rewarding you integrating. Um, the second one is the ability to have a permanent position relatively early to build long-term research projects uh, without having to juggle like short-term grants all the time. And the third one is the ability for the uh, being dual hired with my, my spouse, who I also work with, so the ability to move at the same time and get a position at the same time, which is very rare. Yeah, for me, a um, little bit the same. So the, the, um, the ability to have a permanent job and really focus on, on, on science, not to be too distracted by having to teach on the side. And um, yeah, so in a sense, it's kind of the dream job uh, that you can have here in, in uh, at the Inserm in France. Okay. And do you speak French, by the way? I speak a little bit of French, but I'm not fluent. And what about you? Me as well, a little bit. Okay. And uh, was it a concern when you decided to move to France? And uh, if so, uh, is it still a problem? And uh, once again, uh, please focus on uh, your professional life. I mean, for example, daily meetings, uh, hiring people, ordering stuff. For me, in professional life, no problem at all. I mean, for me, everything is completely in English. The administration sometimes sends me an email in French and I put it through Google Translate and right, it's, it's completely fine. And I have amazing colleagues that, that, that support me if there should ever be something I need uh, translating uh, or explaining. But that's also problems that are less to do with France when like, when you go to a new system, new country, you need some explaining. Um, so professionally, there's, there's no problem there. No, for me, uh, it's the same. It's professionally not a problem. It can make your life easier, especially with the administration or with the technicians who are usually less familiar to, to speak in English. And, um, but in, in general, no, uh, you, you can manage perfectly in English. So you both uh, joined uh, labs uh, in auvergne rhône region, um, Niels in uh, Lyon and uh, Mans in, in Grenoble. Um, why did you make this move and why didn't you go to Paris? So for me, the decision was easy because there was basically a very good group with an overlapping uh, thematic uh, that uh, I would like to join. And when I reached out, uh, then they said, yeah, sure, you have the right profile also to apply for a permanent uh, researcher position. So we would love to, uh, to have you here. And uh, knowing the area quite well and knowing that I like the area, um, for me, the decision was quickly made. For me, also was a primarily scientific decision first. I, I knew a group that did amazing science, and I worked with some of them before. Uh, and Lyon was also an amazing hub for, for neuroscience, which is what I do, and ever growing. Um, and I think that's also some uh, strength of, of France is that that all, not all research is concentrated in one place. I mean, of course, Paris is great; it has good research, but Paris is not the only place you you can work and live. Um, and uh, there's different hubs. In, in France that specialize on doing amazing things. Um, so I think it's, it's worth looking beyond Paris if, if you're interested in doing research in France because they have great places. Okay, and so what, what's the downside of choosing France if there is any? Um, so it's really hard to dissociate from the general downsides of changing country. So when you change a country, there's always hurdles at the beginning. Um, but if there's one sometimes interacting with administration, there's sometimes a lack of flexibility. Uh, in the Anglo-Saxon system, administration is often a lot more flexible, whereas here's like being a public servant, they don't of, uh, always understand your specific needs. 
and translating that and be like, look, uh, my, this, this way of reimbursement when I have an international speaker, every time I have to ask them for the reap, and it's like, well, they don't have a reap, it's a French thing, that kind of thing. But there are minor things, they're like things you have in every country. I'm originally from Germany and it's the same thing, it's just in different ways. So there's always that um, in, in every country. Yeah, for me, it's it's the paperwork. The French love their paperwork, or at least, uh, yeah. And uh, that can cause some delays in, in the way you do your research or buying equipment. But uh, overall, it's uh, yeah, it's it's how it's done here, and I think for a reason. So it's also not a big deal uh, for me. So I often hear that uh, fundings are scarce in France, and frankly, I've heard the same in other parts of the world. But uh, so is it true? Um, what are the obstacles to overcome to access uh, French and European fundings? Uh, do you have uh, comments and ideas those to share? I mean, funding is competitive everywhere um, and it's getting often more competitive. But what is great about the French system is that if you have a very ambitious idea, you can go to the ERC and get large access to large amounts of resources. But otherwise, the, uh, the French, very the ANR in my case, uh, uh, allows you to get um, s s relatively smaller grants, but collaboratively, and then you can do amazing and ambitious science together with others. And because the pots of money every individual researcher gets are a bit smaller, more people can participate. So the money is not focused on one or two star labs that are hot at the moment or popular, but everybody has the ability to do good science. Because a lot of people have permanent positions, that's all you need, a bit of money to do good science, and then the rest you do with others. And that really suits my way of doing research. Keep your core lab a little bit smaller, but then have that impact on a larger scale working together with equals. So I think that's, that's the idea behind it. And I think that's why the pots of money are not quite as large as you might be used to in, a, in the American system, for example. Yeah, so f yeah, I have to agree that in the, for postdoc uh, opportunities, it's, it's quite difficult to get funding. But as soon as you get that permanent position, the, a lot of funding opportunities open up for you. Uh, and you can do this collaboratively, you can do this as a group leader. There's a lot of, you know, once you have that permanent position, it's, it gets a lot easier. Uh, what France is doing particularly well, actually, is, is collaborating with industry. So you have a lot of positions that, uh, for example, PhD, joint industry, academia, um, PhD positions that also set you up to, to pursue a postdoc uh, in, in, in that setting. Uh, for example, at the university here, we also have such... Uh, such grants, and so I think that is a very, very exciting opportunity for even for postdocs. And regarding uh, life uh, outside the lab, um, what were you expecting France to provide, and uh, what were the the outcomes? As for, for me, it's, it's quality of life, safety, um, health, and, and education were the big ones, uh, and a large part is really delivered in all of those. It's um, it's a great place to live. Um, it's safe. The, the healthcare system is really good. Uh, and that's really a particular concern if you have young children because you know young children, they get sick and, and you worry about them. And so you really want a system where you feel secure. Uh, and uh, in education, I'm very privileged because Lyon is a big city. So there's opportunity for international schools. My, my older son goes to a school where he can speak all his three languages freely and, and, and is, is supported in that. So um, as an international person going to France, that maybe is a concern you have that what, what with the other identity, with the other languages, but so far that was incredible here that I, he could just really be integrated into national context and, 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 and can really live all of it. And while also obviously integrating and learning French and all of that. Um, yeah, for me, I have to agree with Niels. Um, we came back for, for quality of life, for social security, um, and of course also to be closer to family. Uh, and, and that's, that's you know, for us it's, uh, it's, it's a good place to be, France. Uh, and especially when also the professional aspects come along with the permanent positions, that's also very attractive. Because it offers you the, offers you the long-term stability to build your life. And that's what we were looking for. Okay, well, thank you very much for sharing your experience and these very positive comments and in some is welcoming uh, applications from all over the world. Thank you.